The mythicist argument on the gospel has two prongs. One of these is to show that the gospel content is mythological, and the other is to show that they are not independent accounts and so cannot be used to corroborate each other historically. Mythicists spend a lot of time and effort dissecting the origins of the structure and stories in the Gospels. They conclude, not without reason, that much of the content of the Gospels was derived from Jewish scripture, mythical motifs that were current in religions at the time, particularly in Judaism, earlier non-Jewish literature, Paul's epistles and clever invention. Most historicists are triumphal historicists and reject this analysis out of hand, and that is why this area of the origins of the gospel material is so vigorously debated, but it has little to do with mythicist versus minimal historicity debate. The mythological prong of the myth argument has a significant weakness, and that is that both historicity and mythicism accept that much of the gospel content is mythological. And it is vital to mythicism that all of the content about Jesus is mythical. This will be very hard to show, given the limited information we have about beliefs at the time, and specifically about the extent to which beliefs in different religions or geographical regions spread to one another. Also, the onomastic argument demonstrates with some rigour that most of the names appearing in the Gospel were derived from the Palestinian Jewish population around the time when the Gospels were written, rather than from any of these other sources, suggesting they contain at least a small amount of history, though for the mythicists, not history about a historical Jesus. Notwithstanding this limitation, mythicists give the mythology issue more coverage than the independence issue simply because there's more to say about it, but both sides accept that most of the gospel content is mythical. Therefore, interesting as they are, we will not address questions of the mythical and scriptural origins of the gospels and rather look specifically for differences between the predictions of the two theories. Outside of the issue of myth in the gospels, there are two issues that mythicists must explain. One of these is how the correct names got into the Gospel, as discussed in the video on the onomastic argument, and the other is the interdependence of the Gospels. Mythicism cannot have two people independently inventing the same story, because it would be too improbable. So therefore the Gospels have all to have come from the same historicising source. One theory is that this source was the Gospel of Mark. Matthew and Luke clearly owe much to Mark, and so are not truly independent of Mark, but they also contain stories that are not in Mark, many of which are common to both Matthew and Luke, and are ascribed to a hypothetical Q source. An alternative explanation for this is that Matthew copied Mark and added bits, and Luke copied Matthew, leaving some bits out and adding others. This gets rid of the hypothetical Q source, but there is still the problem of John. It is possible that John had access to Mark, Matthew and Luke, and he reads differently because he was much freer in his paraphrasing them than they were with each other but there is also a lot in John that is not in the other Gospels at all. Ergo, he either had another source or did a lot of inventing. So one position is to have all four Gospel writers dependent on each other, but also fairly freely paraphrasing, omitting and inventing stories. Plausible though this may sound, too much invention fails to explain the distribution of names. Remember this distribution holds not only for the Gospel of Mark, but also for the Gospels collectively. So another possibility is that Mark was using earlier sources either from oral tradition or perhaps written sources containing collections of sayings and stories about earlier church figures or apostles. Mark then uses the stories but reallocates them to Jesus in his Gospel. This sounds plausible, but unfortunately it requires that Matthew, Luke and John did the same thing, taking earlier stories about apostles and ascribing them to Jesus. And this begins to sound like a conspiracy. For these reasons, I think it is difficult to maintain that historicization began with Mark and the other Gospels copied him. So another way of having the Gospels interdependent is to place the euhemerization process before Mark was written. This then allows for Mark to be relying on previous stories that already had Jesus historicized. In fact, if the euhemerization process was placed early enough, this would answer all of the historicist points about the Gospel sources, though we would still have to explain how the right names got into the Gospels. Another possibility is that euhemerization actually started with Paul and was an unintended consequence of his lack of clarity in distinguishing between the earthly and the heavenly realms. If Paul really was a mythicist, then his habit of using earthly metaphors for spiritual concepts, for example having Jesus born of a woman and having James brother of the Lord, could have caused as much confusion in his ancient readers as it does in his modern historicist readers. This could have led to the emergence of the belief that Jesus was actually a man, and to subsequent invention and reattribution of sayings and events to him in the process of oral transmission during and after Paul's lifetime. If that is what happened, it would explain something else. Why the Gospels were written when they were.
Mark may have been faced with the problem of a confusing religious tradition that he needed to clarify, without knowing for sure whether Jesus existed or not. He may then have assembled stories and sayings and developed his gospel from them that was intended to accord with what was currently circulating in text and oral tradition, but also to impart a deeper meaning. The later gospel writers would have had more difficulty telling whether Jesus existed and simply accepted that he did, and then added more characters from existing traditions and their own mythical ideas. Recall the use of Aramaic phrases in the Gospels. This is cited by historicists to justify stories having an origin in oral tradition, but it can alternatively be explained by the Gospel writers using Aramaic versions of the Old Testament or other non-Christian texts, or oral tradition not originally about Jesus. This position solves some problems but raises others, one of which is the time frame of Jesus' life. Noting that the onomastic argument suggests that the stories originated in Judea, could you hemorization have occurred when the imaginary Jesus would still have been within living memory had he existed? It may of course be that you hemorization initially did not come with any specific time stamps, but it does seem that Pilate's involvement in Jesus' death was an early, universal and widespread belief. Pilate ruled Judea from 26 to 36 AD, so if euhemorization began in the 50s, it would only have been about 20 years since the supposed death of Jesus. Would euhemorization therefore not have been open to challenge from people in Jerusalem who claim no such things ever happened? If we were talking about a community of historians, this would be a very serious challenge, but we're not. We are talking about a religious community, and judging by the behaviour and beliefs of religious communities today, this would pose no problem whatsoever. This aversion of mythicism is the one that makes the fewest assumptions about what records were later falsified or invented in the period of historicist hegemony. But it is also one of the most convoluted, in the next video, I turn to the essential feasibility of the two theories as they stand, modified by the constraints of the records available.